Word's out the NCPD's gonna put Watson on lockdown. If I'm gonna sleep in my own bed tonight, we better put it in fifth. Hello, it's me, Adam, and I'm joined by Ben Joy. And uh, ask me anything about Cyberpunk, or at least the beginning of Cyberpunk, which is what we're looking at here. Um, being played on an Xbox Series X um, with like all the latest updates and stuff, so it should work a little bit better, hopefully. How's yep. it going, Ben? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Not too bad yourself? I'm good. Uh, what's your first question about Cyberpunk? <laughs> um, what makes this cyber a punk? I was going to ask you what makes this punk cyber, but that's too obvious. I want to know what makes this cyber a punk. I think punk is about being like antagonistic towards the systems that control us, you know. Mm -hmm. And cyber is a way of doing that with robots and stuff. Can't and stop night city. So this is, yeah, like I mean, a really high-profile release from from last year that maybe didn't have the smoothest launch, and they were like. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. We're going to fix it. Yeah, see you in 12 months. <laughs> yeah. And they have now Legends fixed it. They fixed it to their credit. From like a performance point of view, I think people do still have a lot of complaints about maybe the gap between what they wanted it to be, maybe what it was advertised as, and what it actually is um, yeah. in terms of like moment-to-moment -moment playing it. And so definitely from a performance, performance point of view, it seems a lot more stable, um, and it's very... Nice to look at visually. And there's a bit of a nighttime scene, so you get kind of like a, a rain effect and some neon. It also looks good during the day. Um, and then sometimes dudes try and shoot you. Fucking drive, Jackie. Oh yeah, uh, language boy. Oh yeah. Kids, <laughs> turn off now. Yep. I mean, that's the real punk aesthetic. Is saying swear words on YouTube. Nothing says punk like dropping a few. <laughs> which we which we won't do. We would never do. Why would it? Got you, assholes! So yeah, this is near the beginning of the game, so you haven't got to worry too much about spoilers if that's your bag. But obviously, if you want to see it at all, you can play it. Because it is stable enough to do so. Let's do a little bit of uh, combat here. So I, I just killed I, this we, guy. Yeah, nice. Put him in a freezer. Yep. So we, we've spoken a lot over the last 12 months about this game and its rocky release and everything going on, on with it. And I just, I wonder how much long-term damage to this title it will have done. I think CD Projekt Red will be fine. Like, I think their next game will be fine. I think people will be hesitant, but I don't think it's going to harm them long-term. Whereas with this game, I wonder whether it's going to have had a knock-on effect where, like, had it gone smoothly, this could have been maybe a GTA... 5 esque in that people just play this for donkey's years and I wonder now because it took so long to get it to where it needed to be whether it will still end up being like that um, I guess time will tell but it's definitely it's interesting to see whether it will have that long term effect on will this become a kind of game to the service game like a long life game or is it going to be kind of in like a, a one and done for players because they were almost over it before it got good I yeah, I think. and I think uh, one one thing that I think a lot of players, uh, I mean, I think it's a good game. Let's let's make, be clear about that. I think this game yeah. is actually a good video game, but I think for a lot of people, they were hoping that it was going to be maybe deeper than it is. Like it, mm. it's it's maybe quite a superficial game. Like the the systems at play here aren't maybe as complex as um, as some other titles that. You know, even their own titles, even you know, as complex as like the The Witcher Three, for example. Mm. Um, I think this is a little bit more straightforward. So that might have. There'll be some people who will just never forgive it for that. Like they'll never forgive the game for what it is compared to what they wanted it to be, and yeah. arguably could have been. Um, but I think that it will have its fans, and I, it wouldn't surprise me if we do see a Cyberpunk twenty seventy eight, uh, or like a, a sequel to this, or a spin off, or something, because. They obviously put a lot of effort into it, um, but I do think that you know they've already announced The Witcher 4. I'm sure that is in part due to the maybe slightly tepid response um, to Cyberpunk's launch. That they're like, let's just <laughs> we fixed it, let's move on and get people excited about the next one because this this hasn't ignited in the way that we had maybe hoped that it was going to. Go for a nice little drive. So are you 
driving this car or are you a passenger in this car? I'm a passenger because, like, in this you're car. Looking, you're not driving. Yeah, but you, you can drive the cars. Um, right. So this this is part of a mission where Jackie is just driving you around and you just hang out. And if someone yeah. tries to shoot you, you pop your head out the window and shoot them back. Um, but it's it's possible to drive. Um, like like when you just do open world stuff, you can drive around. Um, and yeah, I guess the, the big draw or the, the big cyberpunk angle is the kind of body modification stuff. So like as you play and level up and uh, progress through the story, you can go to see like back alley cyberpunk doctors who will like surgically implant you with things that make you better at hacking, better at combat um, and all those sorts of things. So you get to kind of like really kind of augment your body over time and become like a a cyborg, basically. A cyborg punk, if you will. Um, which I think is, I mean, it's, it's definitely a cool aesthetic. It's not one that we've seen done that recently in games. There is a rich history of cyberpunk in, like, games and literature in general. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to, this is, this is definitely the highest profile take uh, on, the, on yeah, the kind of genre. Yeah, pro probably the highest fidelity that anyone's done it as well. Graphically speaking, yeah, I think yeah definitely yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Some people might, you know, some people will definitely love it. But like the first person shooting is obviously maybe not CD Projekt Red's wheelhouse either, compared to mm -hmm. third person fantasy sword slashing. <laughs> They're yeah. quite different feelings, and I think they have done a pretty good job here of like making it feel fun to to shoot. But I also think it's not at the very top tier of like first person shooter feelings. Sure. It doesn't feel as good as like a as a modern Doom or a Destiny or, or any of the games that we think of as being really good from like a first person shooter feeling perspective. Yeah. Um one thing that I think the game really excels at, and this is probably quite obvious obvious I guess from like the way that it, it's put together, but like the environments is probably one of the best environments that I've ever really seen in games, just in terms of the depth of it. There are some like repetitive elements, like you see the same adverts, see the same kind of like NPCs, but yeah. in general, looking around it, it is like, oh, I'm I'm like living in like Blade Runner here. This is like mm. a really well realized city with lots of like objects and posters and all these sorts of things that just really create a really, I guess, authentic feels like a strong word. <laughs> But a really interesting, um, like space to walk around and occupy. Um, if you if you like that sort of stuff, you would definitely enjoy just like exploring the city and like looking in shops and looking at little details and things. And yeah, it's quite immersive. Like I think you're right with the detail. Like there's a lot of detail in it to in, enjoy outside of the the story. Yeah. Let's go to sleep. That's the real dream. That's the power yeah. fantasy I want to have. Yeah. A good night's sleep. You just want dream simulator as uh, a game. Yeah. Sleep simulator. Oh, now you've got to wake up. And go to your job. Oh, God. Although my job appears to just be smuggling things and shooting people. I guess it's... Yeah, could be could worse. Be worse. Yeah. I mean, there was a vending machine right outside my apartment that says Burrito XXL. So this guy is living the dream. Yes, uh, I want one of those in, in my bedroom. <laughs> is that your system that's malfunctioning? Yes. So I, I like, jacked in. I, I plugged myself into somebody else with a cable, and I've got, like, some sort of virus. Um, a metaphor, if you will. Yeah. We could say that. Um, basically, you know that bit that everyone always... At the end of Independence Day, when it's like, how did Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum plug their computer into an alien spaceship? Cyberpunk doesn't have that problem. Everything just plugs into everything. Um, yeah. And you just deal, with, you deal with the consequences. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everyone's got the future version of whatever USB is. They've got USB, I don't know, 10. No lightning cables here. No. I mean, I'm sure if, if Apple were in this, they'd have their own proprietary cable and you wouldn't get digital yeah. viruses through it, but it would be expensive. Yeah. It's only plug into other 
Apple devices. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Supposed to meet with Jackie. Let's go find Jackie. So you get to see a bit of the daytime here, which I think actually is when the uh, is when the city looks best. I do like the nighttime stuff, but I like being able to actually like see things, see see what's going on. Ooh, welcome to the nice. city of the future. I mean, it does look impressive. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, graphically it's great, and it's it's nice that they've been able to make the graphical fidelity work on consoles now. Obviously, this is an Xbox Series X, was never one of the real problem children in yeah. terms of like performance, but um, it's definitely definitely nice that they've put the effort in. Enjoyed it. Interesting haircut. Oh, everyone's got interesting haircuts. And this guy's got like you know like tech in his face, and he's eating noodles. What? what? This is the cyberpunk. Yeah. Like I, like I has all these body modifications, and I'm like, whoa, that's an odd haircut. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that guy's got never, really. Never mind the, never mind the tech in the face. And how his father's <laughs> done his trim. Yeah. Uh, so you get some conversation options. Uh, as far as I can tell, they don't do much. Like you do get some flexibility in how you approach missions, like whether to do it stealthy or whether to go in all guns blazing. Um, but I think the storyline, and this is, I guess, one of the problems that some people have with it, the storyline, I think, is shepherding you in a very specific direction, and you're going to do the same missions everyone else does in pretty much the same order for the most part, in terms yeah, of the major not, missions, anyway. It's not massively sandbox. It's a Here's the narrative thread. You're going to follow the narrative thread, and you can deviate slightly, but not not greatly. Yeah, I mean, you can you can drive around, but it's just like you're going around the city, and you can do really basic stuff. But if you want to get into a real mission, you're going to go to the missions that they've given you, which are like yeah. the, the big ones. Should we have been listening to this conversation? Nah, yeah, I think it's not important. There's noodles. There's a mission. I don't know. Uh, if you could modify your body with a bit of technology, what would you have? Uh, I think I would do... I reckon I'd do something with my leg. Because I've, <laughs> historic, I've historically had bad knees. Right. Um, you want, like, robot uh, knees. Yeah, so if I could fix that so that I just don't get knee pain again yeah. from doing simple things like walking and playing golf. That would be great. <laughs> we, you, the high even, impact lifestyle that I live, my knees need to be protected. You don't even want like mega knees, you just want knees just that work. Just functioning knees, yeah, functioning <laughs> knees will do. Oh, at least at least give you the ability to like jump really high and do like... No, 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 just give me the ability to walk six miles without being in pain. <laughs> okay. I think I'd be pretty boring. I would go for like Inspector Gadget arms just to be able to like Reach That'd things cool. from far away. Yeah. So you just want to be lazy so you can pick things up from the shelf without standing up. I yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel you. I got a deed. So this is uh, the driving. You were asking earlier if you could drive. This is. Yeah. I'm now at the wheel. You can choose between the first person of you and this third person one, which I think is a little bit easier. Um, although it's still quite hard, I'm finding. I say, how do you find the driving? Because I feel like there's definitely a gulf between games which are driving games and games in which you can drive into how easy it is. Um, yeah. Normally, very difficult in a non-driving game. Yeah, oh, it's 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 no, it's no Forza Horizon. Let's put it that way. Yeah, but it's uh, <laughs> it is. I mean, it is. I think it is on par with something like a GTA, where the you know the, the cars will handle pretty much the same, and they're they're not. Not great, but they're fine. Uh, I think we're about to go into a mission with some spoilers. So maybe we'll wrap up here. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you on a future Etch Play video. Take care. Hey, v. Bye. Dr. Vector will see you now. I'll sit tight over here. Me and Misty got a little 